Just before I prayed one evening with my young grandson who was staying over with us, uh, I thought I'd slightly check him out. So I said to him, he was about seven years old at the time, uh, Daniel, could you remind me what you have to do to go to heaven? Looking at me rather quizzically, as if I was stupid, he simply replied, you have to die, Grandad. <laughs> Actually, he's right, isn't he? Whatever else you have to do, trusting Christ, having him in your heart, believing the gospel, whatever else you have to do to go to heaven, you do have to die. When I die, this wonderful complexity of body-soul is split apart. So what happens in that in-between bit between my personal death and when the Lord returns and makes all things new, as the book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 5 puts it. It's what we call the intermediate state, the in-between bit. Well, the Bible's great emphasis is on the full glory that we get when we're raised from the dead. But the in-between bit isn't totally neglected. In fact, interestingly and intriguingly, if you were to read Revelation chapter 6, verses 9 through 11, you find this wonderful picture of a group who are known as the souls under the altar. What on earth are they doing? Well, the answer is, on earth they're doing nothing. <laughs> but in heaven, they're before the throne of God, and of course, they're worshipping. What else would you be doing in God's presence? If you've ever felt you've worshipped on earth, quote, you ain't seen or heard nothing yet. But then, rather interestingly too, they're asking questions. They're wondering. Some of us think when we get to heaven, in one blinding flash, everything's sorted out. But they're, they're asking, how long, O Lord? And here's another interesting thing. They're told to wait a little longer. Sometimes folk think that when we die, we step out into eternity. I don't think we step out into the tyranny of our time, but these souls have an experience of the passage of time, God's time, a different time to ours, because they're told to wait a little longer. And why are they there? Because they've been goody, goody two-shoes. No, we read they are dressed in white. And by Revelation chapter 7, verse 14, we're told about those who are dressed in white before they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. In other words, through the sacrificial death and the infinite merits of Jesus who died for sinners. So that in-between bit, being absent from the body at home with the Lord, as Paul calls it in 2 Corinthians 5, 8. Today you'll be with me in paradise, Luke 23, 43, Jesus to the dying thief. Will it be boring? <laughs> no way. What a wonderful experience of knowing those who are in Christ, the dead in Christ, are wonderfully alive in his presence till he comes and restores and makes all things new. May God comfort us today and may he help us to lift up our heads to know that whether we live or whether we die, we belong to the Lord. And if so, rejoice. God bless you.